Well, we're gonna give it one more try to see if we can find some morel mushrooms. We had some rain over the weekend, and then yesterday and today have both been in the high 70s. So we're hoping it's been the right conditions that if they're around, we'll be able to find them. Let's go for a walk. These flowers here are the flowers of wood sorrel. And wood sorrel leaves, you can see under here, they're edible. They kind of look like clover leaves. You can see that there's purple on the leaves on the top. There's three leaves. And underneath the leaves are purple like that. And they're really good. But the leaves are edible and they taste citrusy, like lime, or like lemon. They're sour. We eat these a lot. They're good in a salad. Woo. Oh, they're sour, but a good sour. Here's more of that wood sorrel. It's easier for you to see now that it's not in the direct sun. Those flowers are pink and the leaves look like little shamrock leaves, but have purple, and then underneath, they're purple. That's wood sorrel. Very tasty. Woo! Gets me every time. Here's more Dittany. That wild, spicy oregano. Here's a nice stick with some usnea on it. And more down here. Above me here is a redbud tree, an American redbud. And they grow all over the place here. We've got several of them on our property. Not only are they gorgeous, but their flowers are edible. Uh, beautiful on top of a cake. The first spring we were here on the homestead, I topped Grace's birthday cake with red bud flowers. It was beautiful. They're kind of uh, sweet and tangy and a little bit nutty flavored. You can actually use them to make a syrup or a jelly, and it's a beautiful pink color. We were just walking and I had just about almost stepped on this little guy. A box turtle. They must just be coming out from hibernation from the winter. Nice warm days. We've got a lot of them here on our property. Um, and in the spring here in southern Missouri, they're everywhere on the roads. You have to really watch out to not hit them on the roads because it's not uncommon to see 20 of them on the way to town. So, but we like having them around. They're always fun to just watch them walk around and they don't do any real damage. So we'll leave this guy back here in the woods. This is another type of violet that I've been hoping to find to show you guys. This is called the bird's foot violet. The flower looks a little bit different and the leaves look totally different than like the common violet. This patch over here has a lot of these. I've been finding them everywhere as we walk around. Well, I'm starting to think Sarah's basket that she carries with her is cursed when it comes to morels. So we've got a lot of other work to do. We can't spend the entire day back here in the woods and we've both been finding a lot of ticks on us. Yeah, so, I already found six. Yeah, so we need to head back to the house and then we need to get busy out in the garden. We've got a project we need to accomplish in there today. All right, well, we're out in the garden and the first project that we have to do out here today is to put some trellises up for our peas. I've actually already done one of them for our sugar snap peas, but we still have to do one for our snow peas. 
Now, technically, the types of peas that we're growing don't need a trellis, but they do say that they'll get about three feet or maybe a little taller, and I feel like they're going to need some type of support. Uh, we get so much rain and, and moisture here in the Ozarks that if things end up laying on the ground, we have a lot more chance of them getting disease or molding. Uh, so I'd like something that they can grab onto just a little bit at least. So we're going to start by putting up uh, some T-posts and then we're going to run some wire and we're just going to do it uh, fairly short for now. We can always come back and add more if they get taller than that. So first thing I'm going to do is put in four T-posts. So for this, we're just using galvanized electric fence wire. Uh, it's inexpensive, it's easy to you know put up, and I think it'll do just fine for these peas to grab onto. I don't expect the peas to be a super heavy plant, so I think this will be plenty for them. So what we're gonna do is every second notch on the T posts, and we're gonna do that, we're just gonna put up four strands for now. And nothing fancy, I'm just going to wrap it around and then twist it back on itself. And then on the middle posts, I'm going to use just regular standard T-post clips to help hold it into place. We're trying to get as much done as we can, but this wind that we've been having the last few days, actually for over a week now, we've had like 20 mile an hour winds and then 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts almost every day. Uh, it's really made doing certain things kind of hard and hard on some of our plants. So hopefully it'll let up soon now that the weather is turning a little nicer. So, but we want to get these peas done because if they start to climb, I want them to have something to grab onto. So I'm just reusing some T-post clips that we took down when we took down the last garden. This is a little different because this wire is on the thin side. It doesn't hold it super tight. So I'm just doing the best that I can. Once it's pulled tight, it'll do a little bit better, but I think it'll be fine. And down on this end, I just pull tight. Now I'm not pulling so tight that I pull the far T-post over. I've made that mistake already. So just tight that it's, you know, a little bit tight. there we go that's all there is to it we'll do two more of those and these peas will be all set There we go all four strands are done now like i said we'll just watch the peas i'm not exactly sure how tall these varieties are going to get so if they start to get taller we'll just add more as we need them no sense in doing more work than we have to right now uh, we'll do it later on so the last project we're going to do in the garden today is we're going to thin the turnips and the beets now when I planted turnips, I planted a couple seeds per hole just to maximize the opportunity for germination. So now those that have both germinated or several that have germinated, I need to thin those out. If I didn't thin those out and allowed two or more turnips to grow together, uh, there's a good chance that they wouldn't actually bulb out and create a turnip. They would both they could both bolt and that's not what I want because we're growing these turnips for the actual turnip itself and not necessarily the turnip greens. Now when we thin these turnips, you can actually keep the turnip green, keep the little one and uh, take it in the house and fix it up like you're making greens. Now beets on the other hand, I actually only planted one seed per hole, but the seeds for the beets are actually a cluster of seeds inside one little seed pod. So when you plant what you think is one seed, it's actually a cluster of seeds and multiple beet plants will germinate. When you thin little beets 
sprouts or beet plants. You can actually keep them, take them in the house, and they're perfect to add in a salad. When they're real young, they're nice and sweet and have a lot of vitamins. Well, I really thought today was going to be our day for the morel mushrooms, but I just, I'm really, I'll be honest with you guys, I think I give up. <laughs> I think Sarah might still have a little something in her to want to go look for more, or look for some, but I think I'm done. Well, you guys, we've got other projects to move on to, but that's it for the garden today. Thank you so much for joining us in the woods for a little bit this morning and in the garden. If you're enjoying our channel and if you're enjoying our videos, please consider subscribing. We would appreciate it. And if you would share our channel with people you know who you think would enjoy it, we would appreciate that too. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless. <laughs>